Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, Decatur, Alabama. And even more specifically than that, I am in front of Cook's Natural History Museum. Now this museum here has somewhat of an interesting history. This I mean, whole museum began as a display from a pest control company on how pests can damage your personal property. Uh, Cook's Pest Control Company did a little exhibit showing how uh, bugs and termites could tear up your personal items as a way to show people how serious the plight of termites and, and, and destructive bugs like that were. And the museum began to, to grow over the years and expanded, expanded. People loved the exhibit. People loved the, the stuff they kept adding to the museum and it continued to grow and grow. And now we have this, a full-sized Natural History Museum here in Decatur, Alabama. This building here only opened in 2019, last year. So this museum has only been open for, I think, less than a year at this point. And uh, we're gonna check this out. Always love a good Natural History Museum, and I love the interesting history behind it. So please, follow me. says life is amazing it's definitely something I can agree with we got this box of fun stuff here there's some cotton there's a hummingbird it's a turtle shell look at this there's actually a little microscope right here see on this television what you're looking at let's look at this peacock feather under the microscope oh look at that you can see the little tiny bits of bird dandruff let's check out yeah let's check out that hummingbird right here look at that extreme close-up the dead bird let's look at something that's not a bird uh, let's check out this Crayfish's face. Oh, look at look at the little spiky particles. See that big turkey here? It says, "Touch your ears. Can you find the ears of the turkey?" Honestly, I cannot. Say, hippopotamus skull and. Yeah, just in case you weren't terrified enough of hippopotamuses, look at those teeth. Those teeth are much more terrifying when you see them in skull form. This is actually one of my favorite fun facts when I was a kid that flamingos were actually white, but because of the pink things they eat, the shrimp they eat, they turn pink. If you fed a flamingo, all white stuff, I guess they'd stay white. Or I wonder if you could feed them different colored things and turn them all sorts of different colors. Like if you could manufacture a blue flamingo. Probably best not to play God. Look at this giant grizzly bear right here. Bear's skull removed of all its flesh and skin. You can feel the not quite soft fur of a bear. I don't know. It kind of feels like a big dog. And look at that. That's, that is a bear paw. That is why you don't wrestle bears. Here's a salmon that the bear has uh, eviscerated. You can see inside it all those wiggly little fish guts. Look at this massive actual beehive. Actual living beehive. That amazing formation there. You can see some of the bees crawling about. Oh, look at this. We got some non-taxidermy animals. A little alligator. And look, his, 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 his friend there is a turtle. An alligator and a turtle that have become friends. This turtle isn't feeling particularly active today. This is not just a still photo. This is just a very mellow turtle. 
And there's where we live, right there in the earth. Let's find out what's inside. Oh, look at that. That's, that's lava. You don't want to mess with that. That's, oh, I think we're just getting spicier and spicier as we get to the core. There it is, Earth's solid glowing core. What's that movie where there was giant iguanas in the middle of the Earth? They were way off. There's a trophy case of different awards that Alabama has won for biodiversity. They have an award for turtles. Uh, it says the, the, the state of Alabama has 27 species of turtles. I'm not sure who hands out these awards, but they are impressive. That is first place in, uh, in, in having crayfish. Oh, number one in carnivorous plants. They have more carnivorous plants than any other state. They have 332 different types of freshwater fish. They have 182 different species of mussels. And of course, the coveted Freshwater Snail Award. See this giant taxidermied gator. And look at this. This says, please touch. So we're allowed to put our filthy hands all over this gator. Hey there, buddy. Not often do you get to put your hand inside a gator's mouth without any consequence. The mallard right there. Oh my gosh. That duck has like, um, it's, it's bones and organs. Half its, half its body is gone. Wouldn't it be really um, unsettling if, if ducks really looked like that? I have a river right here. You can look underneath and see a beaver swimming underwater. Look at this, we have a little beaver hut right here. You can see that it's made out of sticks. But they've actually incorporated river trash, such as a golf club and an old tire in there. Let's step inside the beaver house. Oh, I think you gotta walk underneath here. And then stick your head up to the beaver, beaver hole. Get a closer look at these magnificent beavers. Oh, hey there, little guy. I'm heading into Little Critter Cave. Oh, this cave, you can actually hear the water echoing. Sounds much like a real cave in here. Go watch out. Old Man Kelton's Squeeze. a spooky cave. Oh, look at all those little bats. They poop. That poop is food. Wait, what? It's a taxidermy bald eagle. You know, I must say, this uh, museum, I really like the way that they uh, have their taxidermy displayed. It's a very very interesting mix. They almost have a very stylized, sleek, modern look, but they still incorporate that old school taxidermy. So, yeah, very unique experience here in this museum. You can see the old coyote there. What these two rabbits don't realize is that this right here is not a rabbit. It's an arctic fox. It is blended in and I tricked them into thinking it's a rabbit. And he's just waiting to drop the hammer. Sivage kind of shows how animals blend in with their surroundings. The uh, mountain lion there living in the sandy areas, while that mountain goat living in the snowy areas takes on the white color. You can see the birds blending in with this giant cactus. 
says here that these frogs are packed with pee. There's the road runner there. You can actually push this button to hear the noise they make. I don't know if they make that cartoony meat meat noise. Definitely not a meat meat. Listen closely, can you hear the ocean? Yeah, I can hear it. I just loved listening to the ocean when I was a kid and the shells. A jellyfish wall here. Some beautiful aquariums. Some very beautiful and interesting fish. Oh wow, look at these bears here, just going to town on that honeycomb. Wow, he's just burying his face in there. Ooh, look at the fox, bringing chaos through the grass, but this is no touching. Which is really a good advice whenever you come across a fox in the wild. Don't touch them, they, they, they may be carrying rabies. But here's an animal that is physically incapable of carrying rabies. There's a little possum smiling down at us from that tree. See, these animals are sitting in the grass right here. They have to put a glass box around the skunk because of stench reasons. You see that ruby-throated hummingbird right there? It's on a scale, weighs the same amount as a penny. Entering the wonderful world of insects, these horrifying tubes right here represent the amounts of species of bugs. Let's see, beetle species. There's 360,000 different species of beetles. I think that is, there's, there's no animal that has more different species than the beetle. It's unbelievable that over the course of the world there is that many beetles. Just look at all those beetles crammed in there. And we have moths and butterflies. There's 174,300 different species of moths and butterflies. 153,000 different species of flies. That's kind of gross, a big tube full of flies. Imagine if, oh my gosh. Just imagine all those flies on your face right now. All right, and then we have bees, ants and wasps. Not as many of those. And then miscellaneous bugs a lot of bugs in the world. See the bugs pinned to the wall here. So many wonderful and creepy varieties of bugs. We have some cactus weevils there. Looks like they're munching down on some zucchini. Now, there's only a couple things in the world that truly give me the heebie-jeebies. And one of them is definitely cave crickets. Have a black widow spider right there. Ooh. And another thing that gives me the heebie jeebies is the American cockroach. Oh, look at all their antennas wiggling. Wiggling antennas. Oh. Imagine them just crawling on your face. It's the German cockroaches. They are um, smaller, but still uh, just as terrifying. Now this behind me is the exhibit that uh, the entire museum grew out of. It is a grouping of household items that were destroyed by pests. Here's the damage done by termites. I have this, uh, this school book. It was just chewed up by termites. This entire chair here, barely standing because of its severe termite damage. You can see how termites have drilled their way straight through that wooden block. It's a book that has been torn up by silverfish. I don't know much about silverfish other than they are, they are not fish. I think they're bugs. There's wood that has been damaged by carpenter bees. You can actually see there's still a bee in there and burrowing in that wood. Yeah, it's just crazy the damage the termites can do. That baseball bat 
been severely compromised by termites. And then look what they did to this poor baseball. They ate its guts out. This is powder post beetle damage. Looks like that is uh, some sort of bed post. It's been torn apart by beetles. See here's the original sign from this uh, museum. See the original museum there, Cook's Mini Zoo and Museum from the collection of Cook's Pest Control. You can see a paper mache termite that was used to be used in the, the exhibit. I don't know why that raccoon is staring so long and hard at that frog. So yeah, I must say, a nice little natural history museum. I think it's really cool that they kept the original exhibit that uh, kind of spawned the entire museum. I love the idea of the museum growing, you know, as, as it has starts as one thing and grows into something much larger and different. And it's cool to see this museum thriving here in Alabama. If you'd like to see other museums I've been to, as well as roadside attractions, amusement parks, haunted houses, and other fun stuff, please check the interactive map in the description. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon, consider um, buying a t-shirt. All that information is in the description of this video. But until next time, this one's in the bag.